Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In today's lecture, we're going to be discussing the concept of DNA mutation. This is part one of a two-part lecture series where we're going to be discussing this topic in detail. If you haven't already done so, consider subscribing to our channel because your support means a lot to us. It allows us to keep these lectures free for your medical educational purposes, and it allows you to not go into deeper debt because we know you're probably drowning in debt right now. With that being said, let's dive in by first discussing DNA replication because DNA replication is very important for your understanding of DNA mutation. Now, DNA replication is going to occur in the interface cycle of the cell cycle. Uh, the reason why it happens during this stage is because our body, our cells are prepping for the replication of the cells during mitosis. So it's going to it's going to prep the cell by replicating the DNA first and foremost. Now, it involves many proteins and enzymes. It's not a simple process. Replicating your DNA is very freaking complex. All right. It is very, very complex. And then DNA replication is a process that is semi-conservative. It involves both the continuous and the discontinuous strand, aka the Okazaki fragments. And it occurs in the five prime to the three prime direction always. This is the basic thing you need to remember. Five prime, five to three is the way to be. That is the mnemonic I always remembered uh, this process by, or this, this uh, direction by. There are three main stages. The initiation stage, where DNA is getting prepped and ready for replication. The elongation stage, where it's actually replicating. And then you have the termination stage, where you are stopping the termination or the replication of the DNA. Now, at each stage, you have very specific enzymes that are functioning to replicate this DNA. Now, if you want to learn more about replication or replicating your DNA and the process of DNA replication, I highly recommend you watch our previous lecture on this because this is a very complex topic. Like I said earlier, it's something you need to know and something you need to understand because you will be tested on it. We're not going to go deeper into this right now because now we're going to start talking about DNA mutations. During the replication phase, the, your body is very susceptible to errors and these errors that occur during replication will lead to DNA mutations. Now that's not always the case. DNA mutations can happen outside of the replication phase as well. Just like, for example, if you're being exposed to a tremendous amount of UV radiation or radiation in general, your DNA can get damaged and that can also lead to mutations during replication. So there are five main classifications for mutations you need to know. The first one is point mutations, which are actually, there are three within point mutations. So three I guess subclassifications inside point mutations. Well, we're going to talk about that in this lecture. You have frame shift mutations, large segment deletions, triplet repeat expansion mutations, as well as splice site mutations. So for this lecture, part one, we're going to only focus on the point mutations and the frame shift mutations because these will encompass majority of the mutations that you need to know and that you will be tested on. In part two, we will be covering these concepts in detail. So stay tuned. Now, specific mutations can lead to specific types of diseases, and we will also be discussing that in this lecture. So let's dive right in and let's talk about point mutations. Point mutations are actually essentially a group of mutations that we have classified as point mutations. They're called point mutations because they are essentially happening at a certain point in the codon. If you recall back from our previous lectures on the genetic code, your codon is essentially three nitrogenous bases in a row. Okay, these three nitrogenous bases, whatever they are, are essentially coding for one uh, amino acid. Okay, so a codon will be transcribed or it will be uh, translated into one amino acid. All right, so you have three main types of point mutations you need to know. You have silent mutations, you have missense mutations, and you have nonsense mutations. These seem like I'm making up words. If they seem like that, I am sorry. Um, they're actual words. <laughs> these are actual uh, DNA mutations that you need to know. Okay, these are all very high yield and these are all concepts you need to know very well. Now, point mutations, oh, let's see. Point mutations can then be further distinguished by the method of mutation itself. How is the mutation happening? And those two methods are going to be either transition or transversion. Again, we're going to discuss these in detail, all five concepts right now. So just stay tuned. But I want to give you an overview so you know what we are going to discuss. Everything in this lecture is going to be extremely high yield. And you need to understand every single concept. But I will make it simple. I will make it easy. And I will make it essentially brief and to the point. 
let's first start off by talking about silent mutations. Silent mutations occur when you have a nucleotide substance that is happening for a specific location. However, that substitution will not change the end amino acid. So, for example, if you had a codon, right, which had three, uh, essentially three nitrogenous bases that make up the codon, and this, let's say, coded for, uh, let's just use a random thing, lysine. All right. In silent mutations, these, uh, these base pairs, these nucleotide bases might get altered. However, even though you have one that's, you know, uh, here, one that's here and one that's here, and this is the altered one, it will still produce lysine. Even though you have mutated the original codon, the final codon will still produce the or intended amino acid. Now, most often, this is going to happen in the third position, and this is called the wobble position. And a fun fact, the wobble position is not actually in the context of the actual DNA. It's in the context of the tRNA. The third position in the tRNA structure is what the wobble position is. A lot of people get confused about this. This is just a fun fact. We often call the third position on the code on the wobble position. That's not really the case. It's actually the tRNA wobble that you need, you need to understand. But essentially what we're saying is that in this position, this third position, oftentimes when you look at the codon sequences, when you adjust this position, you will still get to the final product that you have intended. So this is a very silent mutation and it often does not cause any long-standing damage because the original amino acid is still going to be produced. Even though the DNA has actually changed and there is a mutation that is there, the DNA change does not lead to any damage because the proper protein and the proper amino acid are still being produced. So that's the first type. Silent mutation, it's silent because nothing really happens. The second is a missense mutation. This occurs when a nucleotide substitution results in changing the amino acid itself. All right? So this is essentially uh, the process of changing the in entire uh, protein because proteins have a very specific amino acid sequence to them. When you change an amino acid, you will completely alter the protein for the most part, okay? However, the thing you need to know is that even though you're changing the amino acid, you can still conserve the, the actual function if and only if the, this is considered a conserved mutation. In a conserved mutation, the new amino acid must be similar to the original amino acid. If it is chemically similar, if it is chemically similar to the original amino acid, the protein may be able to retain its original or intended function. Okay? May. The answer, the, the key thing is may. No guarantees, but it may be able to. So in a missense mutation, you may go from, let's say, CAA, all right, to CGA. This second position change will, will code for a completely different amino acid, and therefore, the protein might be changed. Now, we can see this in real-life examples, and these are two examples you need to know and you need to know well. The first example is sickle cell disease. In sickle cell disease, you have a missense mutation that causes the original glutamic acid to change into a valine. And then you have another disease called hemoglobin C disease. In this condition, the missense mutation causes the glutamic acid to actually change into lysine. Depending on the change that occurs, you will get a certain type of hemoglobin structure and a certain type of red blood cell, and that will determine the condition we're dealing with. That's very, very important and very high yield. Now, when we're talking about uh, point mutations, the third point mutation you need to know is a nonsense mutation. A nonsense mutation occurs when you have a nucleotide substance substitution that causes a stop codon to be formed. If you don't know, as our body is producing proteins, the codons are being read. At the very end, you have a certain set of codons called your stop codons. These are your stop codons. You need to know this. This is very high yield. Okay, so I'm going to write this right next to it, HY, high yield, all right, because you can easily be tested on this concept. Stop codons are UAG, UAA, 
U-G-A. Write it down, memorize it, commit it to memory, write it down again, memorize it again. Do not forget this, all right? When you get these stop codons, you will essentially stop the production of the protein. Now, oftentimes a nonsense mutation will result in a non-functioning protein because you are terminating the, the protein uh, formation early on. And when this happens, this is a loss of function mutation due to premature termination of the protein peptide. Very, very important. Now keep in mind that the nonsense mutation and the uh, loss of function uh, uh, aspect of this mutation is very dependent on where the mutation occurred. For example, in a nonsense mutation, if the if this is your entire codon, okay, and we are reading it from the five prime to three prime, and it is transcribing this uh, or translating this into a protein this way, okay. If the uh, nonsense mutation occurs right here. Okay, and we get a stop codon uh, signal. This is the only amount of protein that is being formed. Okay, this is not significant. It's not large enough to actually function. However, if the nonsense mutation occurs right here and we get the stop codon forming right here, then we're only losing this much. It will, it might still hinder the uh, the ability of the protein to function properly, but the protein might still be able to retain some amount of its original intended function because majority of the protein got uh, got formed was able to be translated and created. So keep that in mind. But for the most part, for our test taking purposes, nonsense mutation will create a stop codon, and these three stop codons will lead to termination of protein. Uh, peptide function, uh, protein peptide production. So point mutations are basically three types. You have silent mutations, missense mutations, and then nonsense mutations. But you can also classify them further by the way the mutation occurs, okay? Obviously, the mutations are happening at some point, at some codon, right? In a, at a certain point in the codon. Well, you can have two types of mutations. The first type is called a transition. A transition occurs when a purine, which is either in A or G becomes in either A or G, okay? Or this would mean A becomes G or G becomes A, all right? Or a pyrimidine goes to another type of pyrimidine, which is cytosine and thymine, okay? When adenine and guanine become one another, or they switch, or a pyrimidine switches to a pyrimidine. These are transition mutations. When you have the opposite, essentially, or the, I guess, uh, different type of point mutation method, uh, you will see the transversion mutation or transversion method where a purine will then become a pyrimidine or a pyrimidine will become a purine. Very simple, very straightforward, but you need to know this concept because, you know, it's easy points on a test that you could miss. So these are point mutations in a nutshell, everything you need to know about point mutations. Let's move on to frame shift mutations. Frame shift mutations are important because this is a type of mutation that occurs by adding or deleting nucleotides that are not divisible by three. So this could be adding or deleting plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, plus or minus five, et cetera, et cetera, okay? These are called frame shift mutations because they are going to essentially shift the whole reading frame, the frame that we are using to create the protein. This is going to result in misreading all downstream nucleotides, okay? Because let's say you have this structure right here, all right, and you essentially add two. Let's just say you add two uh, uh, nucleotides right here this will cause the entire codon structure to change and the protein will change. This is the one of the most dangerous types of mutations because depending on where it happens, it can completely ruin and destroy the, the protein, not just make it a non-functioning protein, it can make it a dangerous protein. Often this will result in loss of function mutation. Similar to the nonsense mutation, it's also dependent on the location of the mutation. Like we said, if it's more uh, uh, essentially upstream, the mutation can be uh, more detrimental. Whereas if it's a downstream mutation, 
condition, it might not be that bad. Examples of this are Duchenne muscular dystrophy or Tay-Sachs disease, but the key example you need to remember is cystic fibrosis, especially the Delta 508 mutation. This mutation is one of the most common tested concepts for cystic fibrosis, and what happens is essentially you have a 26 base pair deletion. So in this case right here, let's say this is the original cystic fibrosis gene in the delta 508 um, type of uh, transfer transference of this disease these 26 base pairs are deleted 26 base pair are deleted so you are going to only see this much of the actual cf protein which is not able to function properly that is very high yield very very high yield and i guarantee you i'm willing to bet money on this you will be tested on this concept at some point especially in your medical career okay so that is something you need to know very well and you need to understand very well now that we've gone over both uh both essentially point mutations and frame shift mutations we are going to conclude this lecture and we're going to pick up where we left off in the next lecture where we're going to continue the DNA mutations part two. If you found this helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because your support really means a lot to us. It allows us to keep these lectures completely free and completely, I guess, affordable for you. And if you want to see more videos and more lectures like this, go to our website, www.madmedicine.org, where you can find an archive of all of our educational content. Thank you.